Mark Champagne, welcome to the Marketing Study Lab podcast. Thanks, Peter. Happy to be here. Uh, I think out of all the 100 plus guests we've had on the podcast, your surname is by far the best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And thanks to uh, mom and dad for that one. Yeah, yeah. I'll, thumb, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. First win of the podcast. Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, very quickly then, straight onto a random opener for yourself, which I will start the podcast with just to get things going. If you could have been involved in one iconic sporting moment, what would mm. it be? That's a great random question. I like mm -hmm. that. Um, iconic. I mean, this is there's some Canadian roots that are going to come out of this because it's fairly recent, uh, last couple of years. But just the the win of the Toronto Raptors in in Toronto for the NBA championship. I, at the time, I'm not in, living in Toronto right now. I'm a, a couple hours north of the city now, but at that time I was, and I just remember the pulse of the city. And it's, it's an experience. I wish that I was in the actual arena, especially, you know, knowing where we're, where we're at today, where if that feels like <laughs> such a far, yeah, sure. a, you know, a far fetching event for the future, but just, just knowing that time for sure would have stopped I mean, it did, you know, even mm -hmm. just in the city on the, on the, on the outside, but just time would have stopped. And no matter what was going on in your mind and, and everyone, like everyone is unified in this, this moment, you know, in the final baskets of the game. So yeah. that's what comes to mind. That's, that's brilliant. I, I love that. Big, big sports fan myself. So I can really, really relate to that. And I was having a conversation today with somebody and they were saying, if everything was, I hate using the phrase back to normal, but back to normal. What would yeah. be the first thing you did? You know, if, if it was midnight, back to normal, what was the first thing you did? And I said, go to a sporting event, just live yeah. sport, you know? Just the pulse and the energy of that, right? Yeah. yeah I've watched absolutely. a couple uh, documentaries recently on Netflix, just different singers. And uh, obviously, they're, you know, they're, sh they're showcasing their concerts and whatnot. And uh, not that I'm, I'm looking to be a professional singer or anything like that or, or a rock band, but I was watching The Beatles actually on Netflix. And like, I can only imagine like what that must feel like, you know, mm. just to have like 80,000 or 100,000 plus people just like all in, in synchronicity, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I think that brings us nicely onto our, our, our topic and introducing yourself and a bit of your, your background, which is mental fitness, simply because if, if you think about uh, the, 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 uh, the, up you must get and the the adrenaline and like you were saying what it must feel like to have 50,000 people almost in the palm of your hand singing what you've written or whatever it might be or watching you on a sporting occasion to not have that or not be allowed to have that anymore must be a really difficult switch to to switch off yeah well the thing is with that though and it's some work that i'm doing uh even personally or experimenting with just from from listening to a lot of the guests on my show and, and studying these practices but we actually can um have that same experience in our mind and just with some just like an olympic athlete would visualize you know a downhill ski course you know ripping around you know the moguls and whatnot or an alpine skier or um, i'm thinking of an interview with uh, apollo ono who is the most decorated U.S. Uh, winter Olympian uh, yeah. in, in short track, short track speed skating. And, and he just shared this story about just how you can visualize and how he used to make himself sweat on the plane through meditation, just visualizing his, his work. So, you know, in a way, and it, I'll, I'll be transparent. I mean, I haven't dove that deep into the exact example we've been talking about, but mm -hmm. this conversation, to be honest, has, has kind of, strike that chord because I've, I've done this before for practice, like, you know, in terms of being a brand manager in the past and, and doing presentations and now whether they're, they're virtual, but just really going through the experience of what that, that moment will feel like, or how I want it to feel. Our, our brains don't know the difference <laughs> between whether it's actually happening or we're, we're making it up, for example. And that's why I've invited you on the podcast and thank you so much for coming <laughs> along because it's just as soon as you start talking about brain and our perception and reality and you just start thinking, well, what is reality? Is there a reality? And I don't want to get that deep into it because, yeah, you yeah. know, I want to help people and not blow their minds, if you like. Yeah. Uh, but before we get to that stage, I just want to know the story that brings you to this point of your career and what you're up to right now. Yeah, well, thank you for the question. Um, 
I guess the biggest thing on my plate right now are two, two big things. Uh, one, I'm working with uh, a team uh, called Thrive Performance and Regenerative Medicine, which is, which is all focused on helping people with personalized plans uh, for their health. So obviously an important topic right now. And, and that's really getting to the root of challenges that uh, people might be facing. And, and I lead the mental fitness there. Um, and then the other big thing in combination with the podcast is writing a book on this topic, which is all centered around uh, questions. And it's, it's the working title right now is it's with the editors right now. So fingers crossed, that, <laughs> you know, things are going well over there, but it's called personal Socrates uh, questions that will change your life from legends and world-class performers. Wow. Um, and cause th that's, that's my whole thing. And, and I share that just because that is my journey in the sense that, even when I was in the corporate world, the consistent in my life was the mental fitness and specifically getting up early in the morning to reflect on powerful uh, questions. Because I'd be at that time, I mean, at that time, the podcasts weren't around, but I'd be reading blogs and, and whatnot and just seeing, you know, from what looks like on the outside or, or, or at least from a materialistic standpoint, people that are, being, are quite successful in their industry, just seeing what kind of things they were doing or what their routines look like and quickly realized that um, everyone that was, you know, successful, let's say, uh, whether it's business or I, I now chalk that together just in life in general and, and happy and feel fulfilled and whatnot, 100% um, of them were asking questions and, mm -hmm. and thinking. And I feel like that's where we've lost a bit of that you know, stillness in our lives, because mm -hmm. there's just so much autopilot that uh, is going on. So I was, I spent about 10, 12 years um, in, in healthcare, in the corporate world, in brand management, analytics, sales, all of that. I was doing those practices before going in so that I was, you know, able to at least start the day off with uh, a win of some sorts or on my own terms. And eventually just really grew frustrated with the digital tools that were available um, for, in this case, for, for journaling, because I was traveling a lot and decided to, to leave and create uh, an app specifically focused on collaborating with people around the world with their prompts and helping people get into this practice. Because as you can see, if anyone's watching the video, I mean, I'm not sitting on top of a mountain in a robe, <laughs> meditating, you know, chanting. I'm just a regular guy with an uh, interesting last name and a, and a head of gray hair, you know, in, in my thirties. So, you know, I'm not any different than, than, than most, but notice that everyone had some sort of practice and it's, it really comes down to, you know, we, we're all asking questions, but what, what's the quality level of those questions? Mm. Cause one question can literally change our life can change the path of, how we feel when presenting, when we're, when we're evaluating projects we're working on or marketing, like it's all comes down to some sort of reflective time that um, sadly has been somewhat lost mm -hmm. over the years. Yeah. Uh, I can relate to that. Yeah. So that's a bit of the path. I mean, I obviously skipped through a lot of it. I mean, the, <laughs> the app itself, we reached 86 million people, which was unbelievable. Wow. Um, but financially, uh, it was, it was too soon in the sense, you know, in terms of the, the volume of people that were coming in, not that the app was crashing. I, I still to this day don't know how it wasn't, but, uh, it wasn't, but we weren't ready. You know, we didn't have a, a flow to the content and to the experience that was at a point where we could retain the people coming in and build a successful financial mod model to keep the app going. So we had to shut that down. Mm -hmm. And that's actually what led to me uh, pursuing this book idea and writing the book because that was, that was a dark time. I mean, that was about four years of my identity wrapped up and a lot of questions like, well, how could, like, how could you reach over 80 million people and it fail? Yeah. And, you know, and having left uh, a, a job that I actually really liked and a team that was awesome, like, what would they think? What would our investors think? My family, like the judgment type questions. And it wasn't until pulling out of that or remembering all the prompts that the podcast guests were leaving and the prompts we had in the app that I was then able to shift out of those questions that lead into, you know, digging a deeper hole or realistically would have led into uh, probably a dark depression and start asking progressive questions like, 
okay, well, what, you know, what can I learn from this? What's next? What do I really want for my life, for example? So again, like the power of a question. So that's, that's why I'm quite obsessed with them. I collect them um, and, and do everything possible to get the, the message out. Brilliant. What was the, what was the app called? It was called Kyo, K-Y-O. And that was the, the Japanese word for today. So, and, and it was, um, it was on a trip through that last job in, in, in the pharmaceutical world where I was in Tokyo for a conference. And I remember staying, you know, in a, in a hotel kind of in the busy area of Tokyo, but I was walking to the conference hall every day, which was about maybe 20 minutes. And I'd always walk through this temple and I was just blown away with, you know, for anyone that's been to Tokyo, it's, it's very busy, but very clean. Um, and all of a sudden the noise just stopped through this temple. And then I'd walk right out the other side and like life would kind of resume. Mm-hmm. So the idea was like, kind of going back to that example of, of how I'm not on a mountaintop is that we can find, you know, quiet and stillness and some moments for our mind, no matter where we live. Yeah, that, that, that's interesting to note. So I'd like to move on to some actionable tips like we always do on, on the podcast and focus sure. on her health and, and, and mental fitness. And this sounds like a really stupid question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Go for uh, it. But why is our health so important? And I know that sounds stupid, but, you know, put it into some context because I don't think we, we pay it enough credit, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it's a stupid question at all, because I think, again, going back to this, this idea that we're, you know, society has kind of brought us on this autopilot. And when it comes to our health, we've just, we've, we've, we've accepted a lot, you know, Mm. we've accepted that. Okay. And this is ironic, me coming from the pharmaceutical world um, (laughs) and why, you know, I I essentially didn't go back into it because I, there's, there's some great people over there doing really great work, but I, I do believe there needs to be more on the preventative side of things and getting to the root cause versus, you know, ingesting a drug that is really treating symptoms for the most part. So I think that's a huge reason why our health, you know, well, there's something for that, right? If, um, you know, a disease comes up, okay, well, there's, there's some sort of treatment for that. And we don't think about it. And Mm. that's the easy route. Because realist, it's just like, it's like anything, right? Like, and the reason I I use mental fitness, because people can relate to physical fitness. But I mean, if you're going to train for like an Ironman or something, you've got to put in the work. It, it's not, you know, here's a pill and all of a sudden you're, you're going to run this thing and swim and bike at, you know, an Olympic level. You've got to put in the work. So it's the same thing with our health, but we have other options and our, the, you know, the food around us, like the way that, you know, that's marketed. And, and it's just, we're in the system that... Mm really doesn't set us up for success when it comes to our health. So that's why I really don't think it's a dumb question at all, because if we actually don't pause and think about it and think and ask questions like, okay, well, what I'm about to eat or consume, is this fueling my performance or fueling disease? (laughs) One question, right? That is, that is a, a strong question, really, when, yeah. when you put it like that. And, and, and obviously, the, the context is in the words you've used. But, you know, feeling health or feeling disease, it's, it's quite a powerful statement. Yeah. Well, and it's not to say, like, you know, every now and then to, to you know, to, to treat yourself with certain things and, and enjoy them and whatnot. Mm. But, I've, you know, I've interviewed a few people that talk about just mindful eating and and just the idea of like, if you, if you're going to have that chocolate cake, then, you know, try to find one source, one that is at least with some decent ingredients or some, um, you know, well-sourced ingredients and then slow down and enjoy it <laughs> versus kind of scarfing it in and, and mm. onto the next thing. Right. I mean, I think a perfect example, like you, you have a one-year-old and I have a four-year-old, I mean, jack them up with some sugar. Like we see immediately, you know, what can happen there. It's like almost night and day. Right. So mm-hmm. I mean, maybe one year old's probably a little bit early, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we, we've, we've seen that with our, our four year old and we're, I mean, we kind of protect them quite a bit from that, but you see it immediately. It's just in, in our world, just like our mind, like we've picked up all these different habits. We've picked up thoughts, relationships and, 
and uh, belief systems and all of that, that, you know, if we don't slow down a little bit to just pause that, it just keeps compounding. Mm. Uh, I'm a strong believer in in the belief systems and where we get those things from. Uh, And I'm, I'm, I'm fully behind as much as I, I, I can get away with not lying to my child and that sounds stupid but things like and I don't know if it's the same where, where you are but we have, we have a saying where it's if, if they pull a funny face you say to them well if the wind changes you'll stay like that and it's like rather like than it. saying that face looks disgusting so please don't do it because it doesn't put you in the best light you know you have yeah. to make something up that scares them and it's like I, yeah. I don't I don't necessarily agree with that but yeah yeah well, it's interesting, the belief systems. I've been thinking about that a lot as well, because mm. it's just, it, it comes up quite a bit in the book that I'm working on. And it's, you know, they, they, they serve a purpose to a certain extent, but there, there comes a time in our life and it's different from, for everyone, but where I think we need to stop and again, pause and, and ask, you know, are, do I believe in these belief systems? Are they still serving me or do they need to either be upgraded, edited, kind of removed from the equation, whatever it is. But at some point, um, they just may not be serving us anymore. Mm. Right. And, yep. you know, if we don't stop to, to think about that, usually what happens, and this is, this is the, my mission in life is to try to avoid this for as many people, you burn out, like you just get to a point and you, there's a work burnout, there's some, there's an emotional burnout, like something traumatic happens. And sometimes we need that. I mean, I, part of it was the shutting down of the business that I was involved in. Um, But I don't think it's a requirement. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I tend to agree with you. So just moving this on a little bit and the reason, the main reason I asked you on here, other than the amazing name and the fact that you just purchased (laughs) Legos and and all that kind of stuff (laughs) uh, is the fact that I think we can all have better mental fitness and, within within business within marketing regardless of what you do i think we can all better our mental fitness and and our and our just ongoing health for for that matter and doing that has huge huge positives so what i'd like to do for, for the rest of the this conversation is talk about tips for better mental fitness and how this can help us within life and you know i mean obviously in life and in marketing yeah, absolutely. Well, so and it, it it very much relates because that's essentially why my podcast started as well, Behind the Human, was because I wanted to interview different people from all different walks of life and different industries and jobs to show that these practices universally help, right? Like, you know, I was a strategist, but and I've interviewed different strategists from you know Vayner Media and different companies. We've talked about Lauren from Lego. Um, before we hit record. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was at the time was a uh, chief of operations at Lego. I think he's in HR now, but just all to say, it's very hard to perform and feel your best. If you're in a state, a mental state of survival. Mm. And I'm, and I'm, I know people talk about this, but I think people talk about it from, oh, the extreme levels of it, right? Like you, you just feel super anxious or you feel depressed or, you know, you, you, you can't get out of bed, um, which is not necessarily what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the survival state that we may not recognize we were actually in. And that's just low grade chronic stress. And that's, you know, having emotions uh, and thoughts that keep looping or you wake up and you're thinking, okay, I need to do this. I need to do that. Or, you know, so-and-so didn't write back all of this stuff. And like those little micro moments of worry, that stuff just adds up and keeps compounding. And, and leads to a lot of the disease that we're seeing uh, in, in chronic uh, illness as well. So it's how, how you, how do you recognize that first, mm. you, you know, develop the self-awareness and that's where these practices help so that then you can switch into a creation mode. And that's when you feel motivated, excited, um, things start to happen. People start to call, like it, it just stuff starts to line up when you're in this state of, being excited and your mind feels like it's flowing. So I, I share that just because for, for me, that's the ultimate goal. Like when I'm working with clients one-on-one, it's okay, well, how do we first get you clear, then get you living intentionally, which then will unlock 
unimaginable possibility. We don't, we, we can't, you know, sure you'll achieve your goals, but we don't even know what's going to come up, for example, mm. right? If you're, if, if things are so muddied. So it's essentially like opening the front and the back door of your house and just letting a gust of wind blow all the dust and all the garbage out of your house. You're just left with the core solid things of that room. Like we can do that every day with our mind. And one of the ways that seems to resonate quite well, quite well with people that I'm working with just to start things off it. And it literally takes a minute or less. Mm -hmm. It's just the first thing you do every morning, as soon as your feet hit the ground is just set a one word intention for the day. How do like, I want to feel motivated and, and that's it. And get up, have a glass of water, do your thing, but just by literally one word. And I've seen that this, this is working. I'm working with a, um, a founder of a PR company here in Toronto. And she's, she said, this has been the, the most significant part of the shift in mental fitness. And it, I mean, we're talking one word, mm -hmm. but what happens there, as soon as you set that intention, your mind goes and looks for, you know, situations and uh, circumstances to support that motivation feeling, for example, or you catch yourself when you're not in a state of motivation and, you know, keep picking different words. Um, so that's one thing to just start and you can do it while your coffee's brewing, or you can do it while you're making a cup of tea. The idea is to start Peter with not, you know, not waking up, you know, 30 or 60 minutes earlier to craft this crazy, you know, morning routine, which you might end up doing in the long run, but more so what are you currently doing where you can have it stack or mm. practice stack something like this. So, you know, one word intention is one. So would you, um, sorry, would, would yeah, you go for it. change that word on a daily basis or is it kind of it, that, that continual? So say you said motivation there, would you stick with motivation for seven days, six days, whatever it might be until it kind of stuck there and then change it? What, what would be the tactic there? It's, I mean, it's totally up to you. I mm. mean, I, I, I just go with whatever's coming up for me at the time. Cause I can almost guarantee someone's not going to be like, I want to feel depressed today. <laughs> so it's usually on the positive. So, you know, go with, go with something that is coming up, feels true to you. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's a good starting point. Another really easy one is just to take uh, a few really good, long, deep breaths to start and you can do this while your coffee's brewing like even right now i am the way i'm sitting i'm hunched over and i'm talking and i can feel i'm not breathing correctly mm. right and we do that all like now we're working from home we're with a, a keyboard the whole time just even noticing that you, if you sit up and like your lungs actually have room to to expand i mean that these are small things if, if, yeah. if i've learned anything from the podcast sure there are are you know, routines that you can set up, but it's really the basics, like breathe properly, you know, just set some sort of intention, look outside when the sun is coming up, or if, you know, I've been doing this as well, because the same thing uh, for us over here in Canada, at least we're, when we're speaking now, we're in a full on lockdown. So there's not much, you know, we can do, but I'd make it a point to open the door, at least in the morning and take a few really deep hmm. breaths of fresh air and um you know set an intention and, and and start the day but i think i think it starts with just prioritizing a bit of time like start small but then for me you know i have about at least 30 minutes for mental fitness and 30 minutes for physical fitness every morning um what i do in that time will change just based on what feels right but for mental fitness it's usually some breath work um maybe a quick meditation pick your app, doesn't matter what it is, just something, again, it's just pausing your mind. Because as you're doing this stuff, all of these practices are just training. They're either training your mind to be uh, more aware. So then now as you're marketing and looking at your strategy, you can actually hmm. see the next step forward and you're not buried in the details of it. Hmm. Um, I remember this as a brand manager. I mean, there, there used to be, it was like the job that you know, no one reported to me, but I couldn't do my job without the 15 people that were surrounding the team were, were yeah. doing yours and like all these different inputs, you know, sales data and like analytics and marketing trends and the agencies coming in. And, you, you know, I, I just wish I had these practices because you can take all that in. And then this is, again, this is coming from the podcast from strategist, go take a walk, 
give, you know, allow your mind to make, do the magic and take mm. some time to, you know, connect the dots because that's, that's where the magic lies. Right. So yeah. these practices just train us to be self-aware enough to know, Oh, you know what? I should, I shouldn't just keep pushing forward to, to try to force a result or an insight here. Just take a quick pause and come back to it, for example. And then the second thing they do is they prime your mind. You know, you, you wake up in the morning and you're setting the intention, you're setting uh, a, a direction or like a North star for your mind every single day. Most people don't do that. Mm. It's a competitive advantage. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can, I can relate to that. And, it's only in the last, say, month or two months that I, I've been noticing that. And, and people say all the time that if you can visualize something, it becomes a lot more powerful. You've got something to focus on. And, and yeah. it, it, it's, a, it, it's a lot more um, you, can, you can get there a, a, a lot quicker. And it starts, you just see opportunities. It's almost like you buy a new car and then all of a sudden everyone's driving the same car. Yeah, totally. Totally. <laughs> It's the same thing. It's just, and, and that's why, like, I'm glad, that, I'm happy you're using this language because, um, you know, a lot of this stuff sometimes is viewed in the lens of like, oh, it's woo woo. This stuff doesn't, you know, make sense. But at, at the, at the same time, right, again, going back to physical fitness, you know, this stuff has been used f mm. for thousands of years. I mean, this, I'm not inventing questions. I mean, reading, you know, uh, work from Marcus Aurelius, a famous Stoic and emperor of Rome. I mean, we're talking, thousands of years mm. literally journaling and reflecting on the same stuff we're all talking about right now the same type of stresses and whatnot so i mean there's there's tons that's out there and again just like physical fitness i mean if you don't like running that doesn't mean you're not going to like exercise so mm -hmm. you know try if you don't like meditation try breath work or just try that one word intention journaling is my thing because i i really believe in the, the power of questions take some time to write, take a walk and think about those questions. Um, just some time to be still in your mm -hmm. head so you can let your mind heal and process and think. And what you were saying then about it, it you, you're glad that I didn't see it as, as, as woo-woo and, and all that kind of stuff. And again, it's, that, it's almost that belief system that as soon as you say meditation, as, you, as soon as you say mental exercises, mental fitness, people have this, you're on a cloud, yeah. floating, you are Zen, you are, the, and, 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 you know, the see the, uh, the Dalai Lama or, um, uh, Buddhism or whatever it might be. And it's, you, you take it back and it, it isn't that it's, it's just those 1%, those little steps, those like you saying feet on the ground, what's that one word and, yeah. and building it from then, like you said, you've got half an hour of, um, I think you said mind work and half an hour of, 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 of physical work and building up to that same with marketing, same with any business. Don't, you're not going to get out of bed and, Oh, I've, I've, I've achieved everything I wanted to in my life. It's like you build yeah, up no. to it. Well, and you know, we've been talking about, you know, Lauren and, and Lego and you just said feet on the ground, which reminded me of a practice he left with, with me. And that was obviously they were in the physical office at that point, but we can do this in our homes as well. You know, he would go from meeting to meeting and when one would finish, the, the first or the last three steps before getting into the meeting room, he would just go through a mental process of I'm letting that last meeting go hmm. and I'm coming in fully present for this one. And, you know, physically we might not be doing that in offices right now, depending on where you're listening, but we can still do that mentally um, virtually, mm -hmm. right. And in, in zoom meetings and whatnot. So, and, and again, like that's, we're talking about the, you know, VP or chief executive uh, operating officer of a massive company that we all love. So this isn't, you know, this isn't just, um, and, and I have nothing against, you know, the meditation instructors and, and all the, I mean, they're all doing great work. Mm. Um, but it, my point is we can meet people where they're at and it's anyone can uh, benefit from this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just want to track back one one bit. The statement you made there: uh, micro moments of worry. Yeah, I can I can completely relate to that because I'm I am that type of person uh, that yeah, has same. hundreds of micro moments of worry. What techniques, if any, have you got for noticing them or seeing them on the horizon and then dealing with them in a different manner? Yeah. 
So, I mean, I did it this morning to be completely transparent. I'm, I'm the same way. I mean, I have these practices, which, which I'm super grateful for because then I can deploy them, but I'm no different than anyone uh, on the line listening. It's, I have the same worries. Um, so I noticed it, which is the big difference because again, these practices start to train your mind to notice these things versus what would have normally happened. I wouldn't have noticed it. It kept, it would keep building up and I would start feeling that tension in my neck and shoulders. And then eventually you're like, Oh, there's something going on. I need a massage or I need to stretch. Usually it's not, I mean, that will help, but usually there's something fueling that. Mm. So thankfully, you know, that doesn't necessarily happen anymore. So first, you know, noticing it. So try to, to implement some of these practices uh, daily. Um, and then whatever works for you to, to pause and come into the present moment. So for me, I wrote out this, this happens in minutes, right? I'm not talking about mm. 30 minutes or that's going to completely derail your day, but literally a couple minutes can put your day back on track. I just wrote out, all right, what's, what's bothering me and just, just basically reflected on, okay, what, what's in, what's within my control of this, you know, basically pulling on stoic philosophy on that one. Um, and then that stopped it. And other, other times it's just taking a few deep breaths and realizing, oh, I'm running a narrative in my head that <laughs> basically looks like a New York times bestselling story, right? Um, I'm going to just thank it for being here. I, I hear it. I, I got it. I'm going to let it go. <laughs> and that's it. Or like take a walk or do some exercise. But the key is just is, is to pause, right? To pause mm. and we have a hard time doing that because it goes against like the counter it, it's counterintuitive to our progress progress kind of societal mm. mindset that if we if we don't continue forward we're not going to check things off our to-do list which i would argue if we do continue forward we're going to check things off the output's not going to be great um versus literally taking a few minutes to kind of recalibrate and we come back at that creation mindset versus the survival mindset. So hard to do great work in that worry, fear, anxiety. You can do it, but it's like pushing a boulder up a hill. Yeah. And it's no, it's no good for for anyone. Well, if you're pushing a boulder up a hill, it's yeah. no good for, for your, your your physical fitness, let alone your, your, your mental fitness. Yeah, totally. Uh, in, interesting to, to take this from micro moments to, to bigger changes in, in people's lives. So if we're going to relate this to marketing, that there could be uh, additional workload, um, a, a major project, a mm -hmm. new job, new career, or even going it alone, changing in life. On, on the flip side, changes like a new house um, yeah. or, or children, for example. Yeah. So... There's a lot going on there in the mind. Like you said, it's always, an, I love the New York Times bestseller statement. That's lovely because you, you just hear it all the time, don't you? Everyone's problems are amazing and huge and the worst problems in the world. And you oh, listen yeah. to them and they're like, well, not, not really. So the bigger things in life, how do we deal with them so they're not so overwhelming? I, I think in the same way. That, that's the thing. It's this, it's the same. That's the beauty of this. It's the same practices, mm. the same process, uh, you know, just taking a bit of time and understanding what you're working towards. I mean, one thing I forgot to share when I was in that moment of, of basically I was looping, like, uh, am I really working on the right thing? What's going on? So I, you know, I stopped, wrote that out, but then I reviewed the goals I had set for the year and look, okay, well, this actually falls in this bucket. So you know, I'm on track. So having some sort of plan mm. obviously helps um, for any project, right? And whether it's marketing, usually it's not just random. There's, there's, there are objectives and things you're tracking and whatnot, and you're, you're trying to deliver some sort of call to action. So just going, you know, pulling out, going up to the 30 or 40,000 foot view and okay, well, what makes sense here? Mm -hmm. so we get stuck in the details. Yeah. You know, the, do the, are these details, do these details really matter? Is it really pushing the needle forward? Like what I've got a certain amount of time right now, where is my time best uh, served in this situation? And when, when, you know, when something comes up, cause it, it's going to come up in the day, something rocks our routine and our plan, what we want to do again, this is where these, where these practices come in. Okay, you see it, you recognize it instead of, you know, turning into this stressful situation of I'm never going to hit those things on my to do list, or I'm not going to get to this, 
you can again pull back and recalibrate. All right, you know what? I'm not, I'm instead of doing these five things, I'm going to do this one thing. And you get to the end of the day, end of the day and check that off. And now you feel accomplished instead of stressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I'm a, I'm a big uh, list, list doer and taker. Yeah. Even, even if it's the simple things, uh, I, I've been known to write lists and then cross half of them off because they're done anyway. But it's, you know, it's that, it's that mindset of I've got all these things to do and where are, wh what have I actually achieved so far yeah. if you're halfway through something? Uh, so uh, final thing I, I want to cover, because I think we've looked at what to do in the morning and we've looked at what to do potentially during, during the day, small yeah. elements, large elements. But what about the evening? Have you got a, um, a, a, a nightly routine or, or anything that yeah, you well, you set me up so well for this one with the <laughs> list because I was going to, had you not asked this question, I was going to lead with um, the power of actually creating a short list before you go to sleep. Love it. Um, because, you know, the, when you go to sleep, and, and this really will help you fall asleep if, you, if, if you're struggling with that or uh, it takes forever to, to fall asleep. And it, it because your, your mind loops, obviously, right? So if you can... If you can pull some of that baggage out of your mind, and I do it through, I typically do some journaling before I go to sleep. Um, and again, not long, five, 10 minutes, just sometimes I'll just recap the day, you know, what went well, what didn't go well, where, how am I feeling, you know, where I want to focus tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then your mind's not left working through all hmm. of that stuff while you're trying to fall asleep. So that's one thing. Um, a lot of people on the show always share some sort of a gratitude uh, practice before they go to bed. And again, you, you can write it down or you can just, again, while you're brushing your teeth or getting ready um, or you know, like figure out the trigger that will allow you to remember this stuff. Like mm -hmm. it could be as simple as pulling the covers, you know, off your bed or, or opening up the bed to get in. And in that moment, you say the one thing that you're most grateful for in your mind for, for today, or what can you celebrate? From today, yeah, um, which puts you in this this positive state. Um, you can also use your evening and sleep as a pretty cool exercise or uh, experiment to to wake up with answers. And this was left with uh, left with me by a, a, a quite popular Esquire magazine writer, Cal Fussman, who has a show called Big Questions. He's interviewed, name any, you know, Muhammad Ali, like some of the biggest wow. legends in the, in the space. And I remember he shared this, this practice of, you know, he writes a lot, obviously, and he would never go to the computer screen and write with an empty mind. So if, you know, he didn't have something to write and instead of trying to struggle through it and try to figure out what the story was, he'd write down, what do I want to say in his, in his journal? And he'd go to sleep. Then he'd wake up and the first thing he would do is pick up that journal and write out the answer. I've done this before too. So pick your question. It's, it's personal to you, obviously, but it's amazing what your mind, again, it's all up there. Yeah. Just there's fog, right? It's a bit fog because we're human. We're, we've got emotion, thoughts and relationships up there kind of clouding the path. Um, but when we sleep, there's not much bothering us. So we can, you know, we can let our mind do some, some work on that one. I've used that one a little bit for the book. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. No, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to try that because I, I just find it fascinating and relating to it. That there's been, you know, numerous, numerous in instances. And if you look back over anyone's life, there will be where you, you just couldn't figure something out, whether it was a, a work problem, whether it was something you were doing some DIY or something. And, and it was, how can I fix this? And you hadn't got a clue. And then you wake yeah. up in, in the morning, you look at it and you just go, oh yeah, you do that. And yeah. it, it's just crazy. Like it's the totally. same thing. It hasn't changed, but your mind's changed. Absolutely. Well, and the key with this too is, is th what's critical in the whole process is that, from the moment you wake up to the moment you start writing out or thinking that answer is that there's nothing there in between, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that, that goes, I think that relates well to a lot of strategic thinking and whatnot, mm -hmm. you know, at least for me and, and for what I've seen is reserved for the morning um, before you get hit with, um, you know, just content and, and stimulus, for example. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I finish every, chat that i have every episode with some quick fire questions if you're ready for these mark yeah go for it 
Excellent. Right. What was the last thing you remember Googling? Oh, probably a word for the book. Um, <laughs> my grammar and my, my spelling is, is not the greatest. I'm trying to think what the last thing would have been. Probably Clubhouse, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's everybody's last Google, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah. How to figure out Clubhouse. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, what's the most important thing to know about mental fitness right now? That it's accessible to all of us. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So why do you love what you do? Because there's nothing more gratifying or rewarding to see when... A, an unlock happens with someone, mm -hmm. you know, after years and years of, of pushing or having met with resistance and that it's all there. It's all in, 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 in a, in a very practical way. Amazing. Finally, most important question. People want to find you know more about what you do, all that kind of stuff. And we'll have links in the show notes as always, where should they go? I think the, the best one or the easiest one to remember is just behind the human.com. And you can find uh, the two shows that I host. And if you're interested in any type of mental fitness, you can, we can chat there. Socials all on there. Um, yeah. And the Brilliant. book, the book is there. Sign up. I mean, love to, to chat with you. It's still early, so we can still make some changes and get some more content in there for you. Fantastic, Mark. Absolute pleasure to have you on today. Thank you so, so much for joining me. And hopefully you'll come back when your book's finally released. And yeah. we can talk about that and you know getting deep into these specific questions i'll have a read and we'll pick some questions and you can delve right into them first but again thank you so much for joining us thank you this was super fun peter appreciate it